When will the tribulation begin? The end of the world is a hot topic in many circles today. Believers and non-believers alike sense a culmination of the battle between good and evil and can't help but wonder when it will all end. Doomsday prophets are in no short supply and many false prophets set times and dates that come and go with little fanfare. Where's all this madness headed? Go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming, and of the end of the world? With all the evil going on in the world, it isn't surprising that today so many people sense an overwhelming cloud of doom descending upon the world. In the book of Matthew, the disciples also asked the same question concerning the end of the world and the sign of the second coming. They asked Jesus because he had just told them about the destruction of the temple. I have to imagine that to a Jew in Christ's time, the destruction of the temple was the end of everything. They held their religion in high regard. They didn't understand that Jesus was talking about his death burial and resurrection, and then the destruction of Jerusalem that would soon follow. Jesus goes on to tell them that many would falsely come in his name to deceive. Jesus spoke of wars local and national, famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. He said that evil would get so bad that the love of many would wax cold. However, he refused to tell the disciples the exact time that the world would end. Matthew 24 But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus specifically told the disciples that we would not be given the day and time of the end. Why would we need faith if we had all the answers? Jesus did, however, give specific clues to discern the times. What are the clues that Jesus gave to understand the times? One shocking clue he gave is found in verse 14 in Matthew chapter 24. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Never before in the history of the world has a capability of communication enabled instant transmission and face-to-face -face conversation on mobile devices than it has today. Technology speeding forward at a rate that's outdating products not even released and those just released while they're still sitting on the retail shelves. It's alarming that anybody anywhere can communicate instantly to someone holding a smartphone or linked up to the internet via a computer. Never before has the ability to preach the gospel worldwide been so readily available. I have several YouTube videos of this show that are watched in places I've never heard of. Just last month, I received viewers from 35 different countries around the world to include Anguilla, Macau, Trinidad, Tobago, Guam, and South Africa, just to name a few. All these countries saw portions of the gospel by simply logging onto the internet and watching a video. This type of technology was unheard of 30 years ago. What does this have to do with the end of the world? Technology has provided the piece of the puzzle that allows the gospel to be preached unto all the nations simultaneously. What else did Jesus have to say concerning the sign of the times? Go to verse 32 of Matthew 24. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer's nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. Jesus said, when the fig tree's branch is tender and grows leaves, the time is soon. Some have attributed the fig tree to the rebirth of the nation of Israel in 1948. 
Never before have a nation's people been out of its homeland for as long as the Jewish people were and then gathered back into the land and declared a nation again. That's a miracle in itself. Could this be what Jesus was talking about? I'm not convinced this is exactly what he meant when he gave the signs to the disciples. One thing's for sure, we're closer now than we've ever been. The simple fact that all the nations surrounding Israel want to wipe off the map should be enough to convince even the beginning Bible scholar that the tribulation must be around the corner. According to the scriptures, the seven years of tribulation begin when Israel signs a peace treaty or confirms a covenant with the Antichrist. During the first three and a half years, the peace treaty will be honored, but then all literal hell breaks loose in tribulation. This will be a time of trouble never before seen on the face of the earth. Until 1948, Israel the nation didn't even exist to sign a peace treaty, but now Israel's a nation again and being threatened from all sides. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Until that day, Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah was a preacher of righteousness according to 2 Peter 2, 5. He preached a message to the world that God was going to flood the earth. We may have no record of his preaching or even his sermons, other than the fact that the Holy Scriptures call him a preacher of righteousness. But by simply building the ark to save himself and his family, when there'd been no rain ever on the earth prior to that time, was a loud and effective sermon in itself. During his time, the people of earth continued on with day-to-day -day living like everything was good. Nobody ever stopped once to think about the fact that God's man Noah was building a huge boat and loading it with all kinds of animals. Not so different today is the attitude towards the second coming of Christ. Preachers preach the world over, day in and out, but fewer and fewer people yield themselves to the narrow path. In the book of Genesis, chapter 6, the earth was corrupt and filled with violence. That's why God flooded all the earth. The destruction came because the corruption had reached its peak. Today, the earth is corrupt and filled with violence. It isn't hard to see that the judgment of God is close upon us. Now to answer our original question, when will the tribulation begin? The Bible's purposely vague as to when the tribulation will begin. Setting a hard and fast date is something we cannot do without going against the words of Jesus in the book of Matthew. What I can tell you for sure is the second coming is near. The signs of the times are prevalent and undisputable. If Jesus came today, are you ready to meet him? Are you born again and prepared for the time of reckoning? If you can't answer yes to that question, there's no better time than now to be saved.